What's up? It's the run. I'm back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now I don't. Now I don't see that wrinkled up banner in the back anymore. That's much better. <laughs> yeah, muscle thick one over there, but there's no wrinkles on it. <laughs> I think you'd appreciate the free muscle tech ads on the Menace podcast. No, I, I don't really care. You do whatever you huh? want to do. Um, it looks like a huh? red light district. It yeah. looks like a, a red light district. Yeah, it looked like you're selling pussy in the back. That's what I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you were waiting for me to turn 54 to be invited on this, right? That's that's why I'm here. I don't. I didn't even know you are 54. Are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm older, I'm older than all you guys. No, that's, yeah, you're wrong, bro. I know, I know, yeah. but I, I used See, to think you guys were so much older than me, and it, you know, now I realize, oh my God, they were like two or three years older than me this whole time. We, we're more than two to three years older than you, brother. Yeah, not that me, much. me most definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah me too. I'm, how old are you? Fifty? Just turned fifty-four in September. So yeah. Oh, you're going to be fifty-four in September? No, no, I'll be fifty-five this September. But oh, I gotta, okay. So I got three and a half years on you. Uh, oldest child, who wins? Let's see. Yeah, Milos is Milos beats everybody. That old one. What do you got, Milos? Oldest child. He's gonna be sixty. Hey, I'm gonna be sixty like in twelve hours. Are you? Oh, wow. Are, are you? Birthday, no, are you serious? I'm serious. You yeah. got, is your birthday tonight? Uh, yeah, it's seventeenth. Uh, so, so any plans? No. Are you just gonna be home and just miserable? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be home and just like fuck, because you know at a certain age, and, and Ron knows that too. At a certain age, you'll just stop fucking celebrating birthdays. I, I oh. know. What is to celebrate? Yeah, like, you know, because you, you know how as a kid and as a young man, you look forward oh, to your you birthdays. Can't wait. Now I'm look. I don't look forward to nothing. May I would miss yeah, that exactly. one. You know, I, I'm screaming. I said, no, no, not another one. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, Ron, Ron, what? thanks for making the time, man. Brother, how are you, man? Doing good, doing good. You know. Yeah. How's your oh. How's your leg or your knee? Oh yeah. So yeah, I can I can walk. I can drive. I've been back to training for about a month. Light training. Mm -hmm. you know, but it's people are telling me when it happened. It's going to take you like six months. I'm like, oh, shut up. It's not going to take me six months. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good six months. Yeah. I think, I think the older you are, the longer it's probably going to take. Yeah. Oh, but before we, before we even start, let me, let me just clear the air real quick. And I got I to gotta admit that I was wrong last week. And uh, I don't know, Ron, if you know what I'm just talking about, but Milos will know. Because we do predictions every, every show, especially in before bigger shows. And we predicted... The Arnold top five or top six, top five. And uh, uh, Milos predicted his top five last week. And I said, oh, you changed. And I said, oh, you moved James from third to fifth. You know, and Milos was like, what? Why would I? I said, listen, I have it right here on paper. And I showed him the paper. What I couldn't remember was that two weeks before we had Nick on and we did the first Arnold predictions. And then when I when when. I wrote down Milos' top five because I thought, I said, I know what Milos is going to say. And I put it down. And I was a, a little bit off, but I forgot to change it. So I thought that was his prediction. And I apologize, Milos. I stand corrected. That was my mistake. And you are absolutely no right. Absolutely right. I had to say to get this out the air. Now. Thank you. Chris so, Cremier is uh, texting. Yeah, he's probably clicking the, clicking the wrong link. This is what this is what the real deal will do. No, no, no. Because the problem, we got already a link for next week, and it wasn't the same link, so he's probably clicking that he got yesterday. Who's Nico? Nico is my producer. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, click the right link. So t no, tell tell Chris to uh, um, he just got a new one. Click that one. The first the new email he got like ten minutes ago. Yeah, because I knew that was going to happen. I'm backstage. Where he's backstage? Oh. Where? On a on a Tuesday, <laughs> he's, probably, he's probably backstage in the strip club. So so now you're back in the gym, Ron? Back training? Well, I never I never left the gym. I just couldn't train legs for a long time. Yeah, but yeah. Day after my surgery was the only day I missed the gym, and then I was right back. Yeah. But I had people drive me around because it's my right leg. So my right leg had to be perfectly straight for six weeks before they allowed to have any bend bend in it. Oh, so I was had to have, right before the Olympia. I was able to just start driving again. Yeah. So what what exactly happened? Because I, I never really followed it and heard exactly. So it was a it was a full quadriceps tear. The quadriceps tendon was fully ruptured, 
and tore the meniscus and all that crap too. But I was walking my dog August 30th, crossing a, a wet street. It had just rained a couple hours before. And this is probably the hundredth time, 200th time it hop, happened. Usually it happens in the winter when it's icy out. I slip and catch all my weight on that right leg and, and don't fall. So all that weight goes on that tendon. And I'm sure the years of heavy leg training stuff contributed. That tendon was probably just ready to go. So I went down like I got shot, rolled out of the street. Uh, I was able to get surgery September 4th. Uh, I put it right back on. And so far, so good. Yeah. Me, big, uh, big, ugly scar. Milos, you had the same problem, right? Yeah. But, but then, uh, Ron, I, I, I kind of remember that you were moving the furniture, lifting some heavy old furniture. That was, that was different. That was a different injury. Oh, that was that. What was that? A head or something? Well, that I just I I, I get I slice my head open. At, oh, the, oh, yeah. You're at the New York <laughs> Pro. Remember, I had a bunch of staples in the back. Yeah, of my okay. Head. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll remember that. Yeah, I remember that. He had his head busted okay. open. Yeah. I, told, uh, I said, yeah. I'm never helping anybody move ever again. I'm done. Yeah. So, <laughs> so now, so now, my my, scar, my, my big old scar. It was uh, it was uh, the famous story. I was in. Uh, uh, Thailand with Dennis, oh. 2002, right? And uh, we were training, you know, when you're in Thailand and you're with the Dennis, you can't miss the workouts and all that stuff. And I was in proper supplementation being in Thailand, right? So I started getting uh, uh, really strong. You know, that goes after back in uh, our days, there was PCT. And when you do PCT, you don't do any, any, anything else. And then you start the cycle again. And I was feeling like, oh, man, I'm good. I came back to a uh, Coliseum gym and uh, I was going to do super heavy uh, hack squats and I was doing hack squats and I swear to God, I mean, I just felt super strong and I felt like my VMO was so pumped, but it was not VMO. It was, uh, you know, patella tendon, but it's, it's located like close by. So I misjudged it. I mean, I felt super strong. I did a 10 plates each side. And and Dennis knows I was doing those super slow down, super slow up, slow concentric. I mean, and I was looking down, right? And all of a sudden, it was a fourth rep. It just exploded. I mean, it just rolled up. You, you could actually see the muscle rolled up. But I had, you said that the, the, you were in excruciating pain. I had zero pain. Zero, zero. Like, if I didn't look at it, I, I wouldn't know it happened. And then but you probably, hours, you But you probably heard it. Yeah, I've seen it. I mean, you know, sometimes internally you might hear something, but people, you know, outside. Uh, they don't. I, th I think I a, a, tendon, a, a tendon like this you can hear. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, when I tore my calf in in China, everybody around heard it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, but but this was, and and my, I mean, complete tear, all four, you know, medialis, lateralis, intermedius. Uh, so I'm, I'm being, uh, I can't walk at all. I can't do the leg extension, right? And I go to the hospital and this idiot goes, oh yeah, you know, it, it's not for sure. <laughs> I said, what do you mean it's not for sure? I can't extend my, my quad, you know? Oh, no, you have to have an MRI and all that stuff. Mm. So the, the strange thing is I never felt pain, not a day later, not a week later, like it's dead. <laughs> One chair. We, we talk about the quadriceps. Oh, you know, look, he's going to come in late and start asking questions right off the bat. <laughs> Dude, I was right off trying. I don't know what the hell. Uh, it said King Kamali or something. No, shit. yeah, you, you you click the link for next week. Wow. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, I knew yeah. that was going to happen. It happened to me, too, so don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, but, but uh, Chris, what does that mean, in and out? You know, like you're backstage and in and out. Oh, so I went in the studio, then I went out. I'm like, well, maybe I'm in the wrong one. I went in. Maybe he ain't there yet. Went out. <laughs> so he's in and out. He didn't go to the burger place. In and out. <laughs> uh, hey, Ron, how you doing, man? I'm good, Chris. How about you? Doing all right. Doing all so, right. So, Ron, so, so what are you doing now? I mean, you're done with I mean, muscular development. That's, that's gone. So, yeah, there is so muscular what, development. What's your day job now? I don't do much. Let me tell you, I'm semi-retired. Uh, no, I mean. So, but you worked. Uh, you worked a long time for for um, shit. What's his name again? <laughs> 20, 22 years. Yeah. Black to Steve. Steve, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So, as a writer since two thousand one, but full time since January twenty seventeen. Uh huh. And then, yeah, he just decided. I'm still doing a little bit for Muscle Tech, and I'm talking to a few people about projects, but 
Yeah, I haven't been doing a whole lot. I've been, uh, yeah. been rest, a lot of sleep, a lot of training, a lot of eating. I guess all things, all I'm, things. Come as, I mean, social media destroyed the magazines. Destroyed everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got AI trying to take over this. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> hey, listen, who knows about AI? Oh, can man. somebody explain to me what what AI well, really is? I can get a guy on that, that can explain that. But what, how how much do you know about it? I don't know. But, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I just know as much as everybody's seeing. You know as I much mean, as me. The robots yeah. taking over. Uh, yeah. You know, when I went to China. You know, it was no more guys coming up to the room. There was a robot coming up there. Oh, bring it. Yeah, I like that too. Hey. Hey, yeah. hey, if you call it in China, if you call an escort, they're going to send a robot? <laughs> yeah. You call an escort service, you're going to send a robot. <laughs> send a Basically, robot. Send a robot. I've seen those two. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to send a robot with, with 12 hands. God. Mm. Milos, Milos, do you know about AI? No, no. I, I mean, yeah. even uh, this chat, whatever, GPT, whatever thing, I don't even use it. But uh, you know, I'm old fashioned. But you know, it's what I see is a, a lot of, a lot of this. It's like a, it's almost like a machine. You know, it's a guy voice and a girl voice talking about bodybuilding, and it's the wrong information. You ever hear that shit? No, no, yeah. uh, no. I, I like on these Instagram posts, you hear AI voice talking about Ronnie Coleman used to do this and that, and it'd be like not even the right information. Did you send me something? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. remember something. I, I, could, I can't remember yeah, exactly right what it was. Dude, it's not. So they're going to start spinning a whole different narrative on the actual real history, stats, and times. Like they said, Flex Wheeler won the, the Iron Man four times or whatever, and it was five times. Right. There's little stuff like that is just not right. That's, that they are, I don't know what to, what to think of it, but... Man, I've seen a damn McDonald's, the, the, the drive through the, the people in, the, the one inside is all machines. It's not even a person in there at all. Wow. That's bad. That's bad for, for the economy. <laughs> yeah. People, like, what are they, people, what's hey, going to happen? People going I mean, to shop, 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 Shopping malls is shutting down because everybody just owned Amazon. Yeah. They got whole full on shopping malls shop, uh, closing down. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. You know, we don't even know how much more we we we're gonna have to expect in the future because, you know, and I'm not I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or nothing like that, but I'm literally worried about some shit that's about to go down. <laughs> <I'm>, I, <laughs> I listen, I'm telling you guys, this is this is not I'm not bullshitting. It I'm, isn't I am I I have I have friends that are active duty military. One is a fighter uh, a pilot a fighter pilot. You know, mm. and I talked to him a couple of years ago and I asked him about, you know, the situations and he said, ah, I ain't nothing to worry about. But now both of them tell me this shit is something to worry about. That's for sure, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, talking about like a, like a world war? World war? Well, I, nobody can say it's going to be a world war. It doesn't have to be a world war. I mean, a world war would already be if um, but, uh, Russia and China unite and, and go against the U.S. That would be a world war right there, even though it's just two or three countries. But I don't know if you guys follow Nostradamus. And I don't even know if we should talk about this, but we can. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> what you know, did he predict? He predi did he predict he, uh, I, I remember he predicted World War One, Two, II, and Three. And uh, when did the ter Third so it's, World it's, War III happen a, already, a, right? A, no. But listen, it can't be exact. But, you know, he predicted it. It's, somehow it was, I, I don't know how to put it together. But somehow it was that you, uh, China unites with uh, Russia and Iran. And uh, somehow the last communist countries that unite and going against the U.S. or going against the world. It so, sounds so like that. stuff yeah. is going down because you go, if you travel and you and start to see that shit ain't the same. Here's the problem. You, here's the problem. If China goes into Taipei, it's on. There's no other way. There's no other way. There's no way the U.S. will let uh, China take Taiwan because they, they're protecting Taiwan. That's a, yeah, but it's, it's all for uh, buying and selling of... Uh, uh, what's, what's made out of there? I forgot. I read about it. Those chips so, for the cars? Yeah, 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 yeah. Chips. Yeah. 
Fuck, I don't think that that's the problem. I, it's, I, just, I just think it's fucked up because I, I, I hear stories about Mark Zuckerberg building a, a just finished his 270 million bunker. What the fuck? Bunker, you need, I saw that. The fuck in, you need this in bunker Hawaii. For? In Hawaii. Yeah. I, I, listen, I, was, I went so far to ask one of the guys <laughs> a couple of days ago. I said, what's the safest place in the world? I said, do I have to go to fucking New Zealand? He said, no, no, no. He said, Switzerland. Yeah. Switzerland is the safest place because nobody fucks with Switzerland. Switzerland is used. All the top guys, you go, they, meet, they do their meetings in Switzerland. They hide their relatives in Switzerland. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to attack Switzerland. So, listen, off, no, to, no, no, off, no, no, off to Swiss cities. <laughs> no, no. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have a feeling that, that you know, because... They're going to attack us somehow. Probably within the unit, domestically. Either financially you know? or... Because I, got, cause I'm, I'm, I was always worried about this, this guy in North Korea because that dude looked like he can't wait to push buttons. <laughs> you know, he'd been test, he tested so much. But the guy, the guy in the military told me, he said, don't worry about all that because they got some laser shit. They're going to shoot everything down. But we have the problem is in the, in the United States. All them damn fucking um, borders open, everybody coming in, coming in. And if, oh. they, if they do a simultaneously <laughs> attack somewhere with some system terrorist attacks, shit, we're in 50 trouble. Cent for, and 50 Cent posted something the other day. They were like saying that they, the, the, they're building brand new housing that where illegals can come in and live free for two years. And it was like, man, it don't make no sense for all the situation we got yeah, on, yeah. on our, in this country. And oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, shit. We're not, we're not, we're not recording, are we? Oh, we are. Yeah, we are. This has all been recorded. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. This is the top. I didn't know what the topic was. was there's no. The there's topic. no topics. I'm just. Topic. We, we're just talking out of fucking pulling the shit out of my ass. <laughs> I'm staying throw, out of it. Throw that paper away. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, but uh, we were talking about. Uh, Let's, let's go back to bodybuilding and... and uh, wait, wait, uh, how, wait, I was going to say before we start bodybuilding, I was going to say, how's it, the Cuban Missile, how's she doing? How's the oh. family? Who? He never forgets my wife, this guy. I love it. <laughs> hey, hey, Cuban yeah. Missile. She's cool, man. She's, she's awesome, man. She's my rock. She, I've been with her... And y'all have the kids. The kids are spinning... Uh, now we got... Our oldest kid is... She's 30. She'll be 30 years old in April. She's a DJ yeah. down in Miami. Yeah. She's been married for going on eight years. I mean, no she's kids a kid. yet. Yeah, I remember. You remember when she was a baby? I used to bring her to the show. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah my son's twenty-four. Yeah, everyone's doing great. Everyone's, everyone's happy, healthy. Thank God. Knock on wood. That's what's up. All right, man. Hey, hey. Uh, I, I was in Aruba uh, with uh, this uh, Rene Wild. He was a DJ, and then uh, that was like 15, 20 years ago. And then he had some DJ magazines and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, I, I don't even know that's really a profession. So he says, do you know how much those top uh, DJs make? I said, like, you know, I have no clue. I said, uh, you know, guess. So back in those uh, 15 years ago, like two hour, whatever, New Year's Eve somewhere, they made like 50 grand. They make more than that now. Wow. Wow. Not now. Oh, the ones that in was, Vegas, what's the top that, ones. Make. Yeah, what, what's his name? T Tiesto, or what's his name? Tiesto, Tiesto yeah. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve, 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 Steve Aoki, Calvin Harris. Yeah. Calvin, Har make? Calvin Harris makes a, a mm. fortune. Yeah, yeah they're, 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 they all have residencies in Vegas, all those guys, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 But, but here's the question, you know, because we start talking about Per Bernal, I love the photographer, we all agree that his photo shoots were special. His black and white photography was something else, right? Uh, he shoot like five times at least photo shoots. They have a uh, hundreds of pictures of me. And then when uh, Moscow Development is supposed to use, you guys always use the same five shots from one photo shoot, and you have no access to any other. That might, it makes zero sense. Mm -hmm. So wh where are those pictures? It can't be uh, Per Bernal's property if he was shooting for uh, Steve. And really, I'm bummed. You know, when, when you're in a top condition and you have a great photographer and you're on the beach and you're in the gym and you are somewhere, and say so you can't wait to see those photos, I've never seen them. Never seen them. So um, where are they? Well, when you say, obviously, Per was paid, so they were the property of MD, but 
as a photographer, I can't imagine Pear would give like, you know, we're talking about the days of actual film that you developed still, right? I think back then. Yeah, there was the Polaroids, you know, first. He, no, he has to still have the negatives and all that. I mean, no, why would I he, mean, he, he would give he would give them to Steve. Everything. So he had, do you, you think he really would have nothing? Yeah. Well, well uh, pictures? Why, would he, why, why would he keep it if he can't use him no more? He just, oh, like, mm, yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I would never. I'm holding for ransom. I would never <laughs> forgive him for that one. We were at uh, uh, Club Metrics, and then we went to the uh, Costa Mesa photo shoot, and I'm in top condition. Everything was perfect. And I brought my own camera, you know, and just, like, uh, I told him, okay, can you just uh, snap, like, a few shots for me? Oh, no, it's been, it's been, it's no, don't worry. I'm going to get this photo. Says, yeah, just, just for me to have it. No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> and I made him promise in front of his wife, <laughs> and he did promise. So Polaroids came, right? And I wanted to say, okay, the Polaroids, you can come see it. And I went there to see it, and I've seen the hundreds. And I mean, I, I would pick like 50 of them. Oh, yeah, but, but, but first you have to go to Steve, and Steve's going to make a selection, and then. And that was the last time I, I've seen it. And uh, every so often, I send him the Instagram message and all that stuff, and he promised there's some, somewhere in Sweden, and one of these days, he's going to pick them up. I said, hey, you know, I'm I'm getting six years old. I don't know what is my lifespan, but you know, can you hurry up? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, Milo, Milo say my time running out. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm not got, so sure. You know I, I, mean? got, I got a great envelope from uh, from California. Alex Adenti sent me a lot of slides. When? Just a couple of days ago. A week, yeah. a, a week maybe. He yeah, sent me yeah, slides, yeah. and I, you know, I'm looking at the, I'm at the window, looking at the slides, and I see pictures that I have never seen before. Wow. Yep. Yeah. At least I would say at least 50, 60 pictures that I've never Ooh. seen before. Here comes Instagram. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got the slides, and I said, now what am I doing with slides? So I talked to him, and I think I thanked him, and then uh, he sends me a message. He found a place in Peoria where I live where I can actually bring the slides and get uh, and get it digital on a CD. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. There's some great pictures on there, man. <laughs> I've never seen them. Yeah, he was in uh, Rome, and uh, he texted me, and he sent me actually a couple of those Roman pictures of me, Kevin, and, and uh, Ronnie. He said, oh, he got a uh, bunch of new ones. So it's like, okay, I'm waiting. So he says when he comes back, he's going to send it to me, but he already sent you. I'm going to send him a complaint. <laughs> 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 Hey, but, but imagine, I, 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 I was trying to uh, ask Mitsuru to give me his, right? And, and uh, what do you say? Like, to find I, it? I, yeah, I signed some contract, right? And I'm still waiting, you know, to get it. Uh, you know, the, the um, Phillips, you know, from Australia, right? He had a, you know, punk. He had a, one of the greatest shots. I got 99 shots about three, four years ago. The, 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 the pictures I've never seen. He said, like, oh, these are the best pictures of me. You know, I said, hey, what would happen if I died in the meantime? You know? So why don't you just send it to everyone? Right. Mm -hmm. if you send it to you guys. Yeah. Well, I got, I got, uh, I didn't do as many photo shoots you guys. I wasn't pro or anything. But Mike Nevue shot me five times for Iron Man. And he contacted me about a year and a half ago wanting to sell me all the slides that he had taken. <laughs> and I already had pretty much everything I wanted after every photo shoot. He would give me the highlights on CD, so I declined the offer. But they, I mean, these these they're pretty much worthless to these to these photographers after years and years anyway. Yeah. And what are they going to do? With pictures of, of Milos from 1996 or something. Chris, do you remember your very 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 first first ever photo shoot? Yeah. Who? Uh, shit. Um, guy from San Diego. Uh, Ron, Rav Dehan. Ron, Rav Dehan. Oh, so you oh, went, yeah. you went with a pro right away. No, I wasn't a pro yet. No, not uh, you, but a pro photographer, well known. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, George Zach used to shoot me when I was a teenager, and he introduced me to uh, a lot of people. He introduced me to Robbie Robinson, and then all those guys were all around Robbie, and all those guys, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, Zeller, Art Zeller, Art Zeller. Uh, and everyone was right there in Venice. So you got like four or five photographers walking around Girls Gym at any given time. 
you know, shooting different shots of guys and all that stuff was like, it was like, man. I think nobody did more photo shoots than Milos. Milos probably got more photo shoots than all three of us combined. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, how did, I was like, I look at some of these shots in the in the magazine of all y'all, even you, you did it. I mean, how the hell they get that shot? <laughs> like, man, they don't never pick me for those shit like that. <laughs> Hey, I look like a man's physique. How did he get this Roman outfit on and shit? How did he? Uh, uh, how did Dennis get in front of that car? <laughs> that was that was actually that was actually not my not my first photo shoot. <clears throat> was that? Oh, was hold that on, my, hold on. That was my first photo shoot. That was the uh, car. That was my very first photo shoot, and I I was on. a nobody. That was I was still an amateur. He had the glasses on, right? And you know who took you know who took the photo? Who did? Who did um, who? Paul David. Oh, uh, David Paul. Oh, uh, David Paul. David, David Paul. Paul. That was uh, his, yeah, and, some, and that was his first assignment to do photos. He started. I that was my first photo shoot, and his first, basically his first photo shoot too. And that Damn. was that was for a company called back then G E N in California. It was a supplement company. I you know I got two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Do you remember uh, they had a ruthless ruthless? Uh, was ruthless out of out of out of Germany, who ruthless? No. Ruthless? Uh, no, it was called ruthless. Um, it was a apparel. It was like a apparel oh, line from Germany. Ruthless. Germany? I don't think so. Germany. They lived here in Venice, but I thought they were from Europe. Oh, you mean somewhere. you mean the owners? The owners from Europe. From I don't Germany. know. I don't know. I'm sure that was before my time. Yeah, before your time. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't know because I remember yeah. when I came in, it was Max Muscle in Germany, Uncle Sam. Perfetto. Uncle Sam was sought after, for yeah, sure. Yeah, and uh, there was, uh, before, was before, that, before, that, before that, T. Michael. T. Michael, that's what I was going to say. Then crazy, T. Michael was a shit, man. Yeah, or, or Crazy Wear, Gary Stridham. Bro, or, everybody, or, everybody wanted T. Or Michael, Platinum, so. Mike Christian Platinum. My Platinum. Hot Skins, Body Alive. Yeah. Hot Skins would still sell right now today. Oh, Hot Skins. I remember using, I used to go in the store right on Main Street. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm going in there. I'm in there. Being there. <laughs> I'm in there digging, digging. Everybody, yeah. everybody walked up in that store. China, yeah. Triple yeah. H, everybody getting yeah, stuff. Hot skins would definitely sell right now today, guaranteed. Yeah. Hot skins sent the box to uh, Chris Lamb, obviously, yeah. to put on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, what uh, what advertisement, you know? Yeah. In those yeah. boots, you gotta yeah. go. Wear, you gotta go buy those boots. Yeah. Yeah. Millers, you remember? When uh, you remember when we, we did photo shoots at your gym, and Victor Carte gave us gave us the shirts with the yeah, yeah, what was it yeah, CMA, yeah. And CMA for, yeah, and for did. every shirt also Max Muscle. For every time I was in the magazine, doesn't matter if it was a yeah, cover, they're paid for that, it was right? a cover or just somewhere in the magazine, get five hundred dollars. Send it to him, yeah, oh, wow. yeah, five hundred dollars. I remember that. I remember that little gig. <laughs> that That's was the way it should be, man. That was a cool little gig, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bert, Bert used to bring along like a big duffel bag full of gas clothes to the photo shoots. I remember when I year. remember when he started. Michael. Her. No, Michael. Oh, Michael from Gas. Wow. Yeah, I remember when he started. I he hmm. in 2009. He. I mean, I don't know when he started in in Sweden, but when he started in the U.S. Because hmm. in 2000 about- in 2009. When he just started coming to the U.S. with uh, with this girl, this blonde girl from Sweden, his assistant, he sponsored my last video that I filmed 2009 with Alex Antenti, Gasp. Mm. That's the first time I heard of Gasp. Wow. I remember, and he had, he had, he just signed uh, Branch and um, Johnny that time. Wow, yeah. Cause, hey, because he up. and then he moved after that. He moved to Texas. I think he bought Branch's old house. Oh, oh, the house that Branch was owning. That Branch moved in the new one, and he bought this house. Yeah, and and since then, Branch has been with them ever since. And even Johnny, he's doing really well. Yeah, sure, yeah, I know. Hey, I was gonna say, talk about starting. Like I was just a fan of the Cowboys, obviously for since the you know since I was a little kid. So I used to wear jerseys, football jerseys, in in the gym or just around to different shows and shit. And I feel I feel like that was the start of people wearing jerseys and people like Gasp coming up with a jersey. People like uh, um, it just went around like a lot of people made jerseys after that. You ever notice that? Yeah, 
Yeah. I just saw That's a video cool. just before I, like I, before I left the house. I watched the video of you, Flex, and Charles training, and you was wearing a Malone shirt. Yeah, Malone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 69 Malone. Yeah. 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 I used to wear that just because I like that, but then it became like a, a thing. Even the, even the uh, headphones, I was wearing the headphones like every chance I got. Let me ask you. Let me ask you guys something. Talking about headphones, because that's the shit now. Everybody wears headphones. Headphones. Tell headphones. me this. What is this going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what your the temples fuck home. is wrong with people? What is this? Doing? Wearing my headphones like this or like this. <laughs> Not even on the ear. Just like this. Just, just to be cool. What, what is it, Chris? Yeah, tell me. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you can hear the music and hear people. I don't know. I, I, oh, but I, then, I, why? I, you, if you want to hear the music and the people, why put your headphones on? <laughs> I thought, I thought you put the headphones on because you want to hear your own shit. I'm chicken tired of looking at people wearing their headphones like this. And they don't, <laughs> I, I can get it if you put them on during the set and you take them off after. They walk around like this the whole fucking workout. You just want to when show you, off. You just when you want to have a push day and a pull day. <laughs> no. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. They put, the damn, <laughs> put the damn things on or leave them off. What the fuck? <laughs> Dennis, there's a myth about you that I've been passing on for years. I want to confirm if I've been. About me? Uh, yes. It says the first month that you started training, yes. you put on a pound of muscle every day. Yes, is that true? Yes. Wow, yes. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I've done that, but with, not, uh, but not for, not forever. <laughs> but a period, a period of time. But I would say, I would at least a few, like three to four weeks, almost. I mean, now nah, maybe get yeah, two to three weeks. I was getting heavier every day, every day. The only time I did that was when I was on some D ball one time, and I was playing football. <laughs> And then when I was uh, I had that Russian D ball, that mean that Russian um, D ball and so, GH. So you're saying it wasn't so you? Two weeks later, I was 14 pounds heavier. So you're saying it wasn't you? It was the drugs. I'm just saying the shit worked. Because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't eating that much. Yeah. I was like, Damn. No, but no, that was true. I was gaining a pound a day. Good. You know, wow. but yeah. I was I was a but people don't understand, and especially not when they see me now. I'm I was a huge eater. I will eat yeah. you under the table. <laughs> I would eat so much per meal and still be hungry. Hmm. It was crazy. Yeah. For me, you hear about, huh? yeah, I mean, you, uh, you're, you know Rami very well. I've always heard that he's not much of an eater. Not, which oh, doesn't, well, he can is that eat. Not true? He, can he doesn't eat. eat the way you would expect somebody that clean, But he eats clean all the time, though. That's no. what I don't yes, he I eats, think he eats, You don't understand that he's clean all the time. He eats clean. He eats very clean. But yeah, when you look at him, you think he's eating. Tremendous amount of food, but that's that that's not the case. So he, he's he's a special kind of guy, and you know that's why I always say there's got to be some my my statin deficiency. Other I can't explain it any other way. When because they, because if you don't eat, if you don't eat, or let's say you don't eat carbs and you train and you do cardio, you would lose. You have you should lose weight. Mm. How are you holding on to weight if you don't have yeah. carbs? You eat protein. And you do cardio two hours a day. How do you hold on to your weight, Milos? Maybe you can explain that. Well, well, let me let me first address what uh, Chris said. Oh, how can you always eat clean? I mean, what do you mean? Uh, all my career, I was eating exclusively clean. You I know? still no, eat no, clean no, too. No, 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 no. I, I didn't say that. I was just saying Rami eats clean, but people don't understand that yeah. when he eats a cheeseburger or something like that, he's got to go get his fucking stomach pumped a couple uh, times. Uh, uh, he just, so you were just saying how you were in. Uh, People always say, like, why is, why is Rami looking like that? Is that because he eats like yeah. that all the time? Yeah, listen, but but, but here is, and, and uh, um, Dennis, you know very well, back, what was it, 99 when we started working and all that stuff, and I explained to you, I am all for nutrients, not for calories. Mm -hmm. So you nourish your body with exactly what you need. So in ideal world, if you have 
just enough protein, enough carbs, enough fat at all times. You know, there's you have everything body can maximize. If something is missing, is it compromising? Like you said, if you have a protein, but you don't have a carbs and you train like a maniac, you know, where is this uh, energy coming from? So obviously, body's going to have to convert some of the protein into carbs and, and then you're compromising and probably catabolizing. Right. But uh, I, I think it's, <laughs> Dennis, you were that German precision. I, I mean, if you tell uh, Dennis 72.5 grams of something, you can bet your life is going to be 72.5, not 73 or 70, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, just eat and eat and eat, uh, feed. I mean, now that you say how much you were growing, I do remember 99 after night of the champions when we started working. I, I mean, it was mind-boggling. I mean, you were you were bigger responder than Nasser Hassan body that I, I remember back in the day. And Nasser was the one that shocked me. You see, I did all that myself, hmm. but... Uh, I guess I'm genetically limited and I don't have that uh, capacity to grow and have that fully blown, you know, uh, muscle like you. Plus, I was not as strong. So I, I guess some of your heavy lifts and pushing to the limit, you know, made you just explode. Yeah, I think that but, helped that, that helped a lot. If you can eat and train, you know, yeah, but, but yeah. of course, you know, I remember when we started and, and you gave me that, that formula, I was like, I, even, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was scared to get step on scale. I was like, "What the fuck? This something's not right." Yeah. You know, I'm thinking, like, "Can you get too fucking big?" <laughs> I was, it was, it was it really, was it was really like that. It was really like that. Uh, it was ridiculous. I, I still, I wish I had I said, somewhere in my old house. I have those. I remember. I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, "I said this motherfucker is a genius." <laughs> <laughs> genius. Yeah. 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 But, but. All in all, I know that, uh, Ron, you used to keep the journal, dietary journal. You actually had my picture on it, you know, which I appreciated. And you were super precise, right? Yeah. It's no guessing. If you know what you're doing and you keep doing the discipline, time in, time, you know, day in, day out, all the same, you know, you, you, your body is functioning properly. As soon as you skip the meal, change this, change that, I'm going to go out, I'm going to look fish cremier thing. I mean, Chris... <laughs> I say that you are uncrowned Mr. Olympia. Uncrowned. And you heard us say this a million times, if only Chris had been 100%, right? And then you got even offended that we say that. Hmm. But just, I didn't get offended. Got mad. Yeah, mad. But you know I did not. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, would you rather someone say that way. or not say nothing at all? I mean, you were, I mean, I appreciate it. No, he knows yeah. it. He knows just, it. He knows it. I just, uh, you know... If Chris, 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 if if we could turn back the time right now, oh yeah, if I know it's not going to happen, we can't do it. But if we could, right, what would you change? What would I change? Oh. I would, eat, I would, I would, I would uh, eat better year round for uh, sure. That's it. I would, I would, I would be, I would, I would work like I actually believe, like. You know that could happen. You uh -huh. could be the best in the world. Yeah, I, I would. When did you did you did, were you ever at a point in your whole career where you thought to yourself that you could win the Olympia? Only, only when it was a, it was a couple of times around the between the ninety nine to two thousand. So after that third place, and then I was thinking when I got I said oh shit. Um. The year I got hurt when I was on the East Coast, I was 295, and I had my abs were already in, and I had 12 weeks to go. I thought I was going to win that Olympia for sure. Mm. It was going to be between me and Dexter, and I'm not sure if Jay was in that one or not. What, you, what I, year was it? It was oh, oh, between the 06, 08 area. Mm. <clears throat> after the after the 05 uh Oh yeah, um, Jay Jay was in it. Jay won from two. Was, Jay won six, that, seven, eight. I, Jay won six, seven, I think, nine. I think, and, I, I think with the size of how I would look next to Dexter, and in really good condition with that much more added size, I don't think I I don't think I would have lost the show. Huh. But That's then, what it, I've always I, wondered, I, how much better could you have looked? I'm thinking the structure was the structure was perfect. The shape there was no there were no weak body parts. 
condition was very consistent. I would have looked, I I looked more like I did in 05 at the San Francisco. Mm -hmm. so, and, so just for the, for the record, one more time. If we could turn back the time, all you would do is just change the way you eat in off season. And and the way I prepare, I mean, the way I would prepare each year would be different. Like, oh shit, you know, this is for everybody. Mm. This, that's you know, my my actual goal was to to do what I did. Was to, you know, have my name synonymous with the sport of bodybuilding. Everyone's gonna know who this guy is and what you know. Everyone, that's that was like my my mind at first. It was never like, okay, I'm going to be Mr. Olympia or Mr. Olympian. But, you know, I just thought so much of those guys that's in the top 10, that that was just like crazy mm. just to imagine something like that, you know? Yeah. Even from, even from, uh, what's the guys from, from D Detroit, from, uh, the guy from Detroit, the, the top guy, we talked about him a couple of uh, weeks Ron ago. Love. Yeah. Even from Ron Love on down to the top, I was just like, oh, my God, that would be amazing just to be in that sector of the sport. But, you know, to be at the top echelon of the sport, uh, a top tier bodybuilder, you know, especially at those times, it was just hard to even imagine that would be possible. Especially yeah. when people are telling you, oh, you, you're too small, you're not, you don't have outstanding body parts. Did you remember that was a, a thing that people talked about? Ron, is I didn't have outstanding body parts, and that was one of my downfalls. That's my, I, they said that about flex too, but because no, 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 but no, I'm talking about me. It's about you, but that's the, I. I why think that's why would people say that when I thought the goal was to be balanced? Yeah, it's perfect. Be, that's like, perfect it scenario. It is. Yeah, but that's what they act like. That was some type of knock, and I was like, "What do you mean? I did this shit on purpose. I put my my abs and everything matched my my body, my chest, and my." Shoulders, my legs. I worked on my legs first, and then, you know, but, that's what. But people Chris, say. but Chris, let me ask you this: Did you okay? Because you said you let what well, you did your leg first, like you you put your body together the way it was. Yeah. But did you really put it together the way it was, or it just came together the way it was? I put it together. Okay. My so, back was hella weak when I went to Venice. I had I had the lines of separation, but I had no thickness whatsoever in my back. Mm. My legs, I worked on them. I used to ride bikes. I used to uh, train them with super crazy volume and heavy weight first, and they blew up first. And then my upper body lacked. I got photos to prove it. And then I went to work on my upper body. I said, okay, now I'm going to train my abs every day, every other day, whatever it is, to match my other body parts. Um, my arms never really got where I wanted them to be. My chest, not really. Why? What, what was wrong with your arms? It was just, I mean, they started, that was like the first body part I had. So I'm like, okay, I got arms, I got much chest. And so then I'm like, okay, I got to try to focus here. And I just focused on different parts of my body at different times in my career. And until I got to the point where it's like, okay, everything, I need to make my back like my front. And, you know, so on. So a lot of bodybuilders have a lot of front and they don't have much back. Mm -hmm. That's that's still the case today. Yeah, M Milos, <laughs> Milos, if if Milos, if you could turn back Chris's time, what would you change in Chris's, Chris's time? If you could be Chris, I, I would put him on a Jay Cutler plan, uh, twenty four hours a day bodybuilder. Nothing comes in, you know in a mouth that doesn't belong there, right? Mm -hmm. You don't. You know, walk out of the house and go somewhere other than gym and and uh, you know this kind of yeah. stuff. When, when you're at that level, you see, you talk about it. And I was thinking, like, what would I change in my my approach? <laughs> it was just my 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 mindset. Yeah, straight, straight bodybuilding all the time. That's, yeah, that's, my my that's, mindset that's, was, I was all in as far as I'm going to train like a maniac uh, six days a week, twice a day. I'm going to eat perfectly all the stuff, but I never saw myself winning far away from you know olympia never even uh, thought but even like arnold classic and and you know shows like this and, and it occurred to me once it was actually a uh, muscle development uh, interview i said okay i only saw myself winning one show uh which i 
loudly announced it to Peter McGough, I'm going to Canada 97, I'm going to win. I know that Chris was coming, but I had a, I had a fate that can beat him there because I, I was in very good shape. Did you talk to the, to the, to the people at the border to keep me in the damn <laughs> yeah, the, five hours? <laughs> I was pissed when I came uh, so Check bad. his bags. Check his bags. <laughs> He's got something. <laughs> Black yeah. guy's coming. Yeah. Yeah, give him some salt and water. <laughs> He's waiting. Yeah. But no, seriously, I've seen only myself winning that one time. A week later, it was Night of the Champions. I already had a mindset, I'm going to lose this one. You know, I was going into the show, you know, not even believing. And later on, you know, somebody asked me, like, you see, you believed that you're going to win that one show, and you did. Why didn't you believe more? And and, and it really hit me hard. Like, oh, you know, I was kind of realist. I mean, How that's what you feel about that show, anyway. Confidence is I, confidence I, is a very powerful weapon. Yes, I smoked you there, Chris. Even back down vices. Ah, damn! That was another pinto. Rolled up like a. Like a <laughs> <laughs> Milos, Milos, and rolled up on three wheels and beat you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but but th th this is what it is now for Chris. I mean, really, if he had a. Uh, coach to to set him out and say he is so close you can make a history. Yeah, but he had a coach. He had a coach. What Chris needed, I think, was a fucking ankle bracelet or something. Put something on there where you can I mean, track him where kind of you can track him where he's going. This and was, if it, this was that show right uh, here, yeah, which was that? That was the yeah. Night of Champions. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 Night of the Champions. I have no problem losing to you. I, I said. Oh, it. but what I'm saying is like yeah. that shot with that tight abs with that tight. All that shit, dude, with the legs, with the fucking. I said the same shit on the abs and legs. Chris, Chris, Chris don't, 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 there. don't, don't show us the bottom. Let's see some, there's some X-rated pictures on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Come on, look at that. Run, run. Did you, did you watch '97 Night of the Champions? No, I wasn't at that show. I, yeah. I mean, I saw the coverage in the magazines, but I wasn't at that. Uh, was that that one? No, that was the one that Chris won. Yeah, I missed that year, but I, I want to throw that, Dennis. I want to throw it to you because you were third place at the Olympia one year, correct? Fourth. Fourth. Okay, so I always say if you're in the top five of the Olympia, you're good enough to be Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. You're in the mix. You're you're top five best oh, built human beings yeah. on the planet. Oh, would the, you have done anything? There? The motive. What, what the motivation level was off the charts after that. I thought I'm going to come. Back in 2004, and I'm I'm going for it. I'm I'm not saying I did. I said I'm going to win, but I my goal was to move up. Uh, so so on that note, did you ever see yourself winning? Um, no. You mean before the show or of during no, no, the show? At, at any point. At any point, because I never had a oh I can win Mr. Olympia. I, I, now, you know what? I, I I to be honest, you know, I'm not I'm not fucking delusional and and thinking and I'm I, I was good enough to beat. Ronnie and, 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 and some of the guys. But I, let me put it this way. I, I didn't think I was going to be able to beat Ronnie, but I but thought I can catch the other guys. You, know? you, felt, you felt at the Arnold that you could have. Not Ronnie, you. <laughs> put your finger down, man. <laughs> Not, no, I, I, I didn't think I was going to beat Ronnie. I didn't think I was going to beat Ronnie. I was just—I just had it. I just had it out, out for the real deal. No, you gotta, no. But what, I, what, I, no, what I'm thinking, what I'm, what I'm saying with this is not that I thought that you guys are not good enough. I think that the guys that I'm not mentioning right now, or you, Chris, I thought because you guys have off days. You guys not always consistent, great. You know, if Chris, if I'm, I said this a thousand times, if Chris, if Chris is on, there's no, it's no contest. Yeah, I'm not yeah. stupid. I'm not yeah. stupid and gonna sit here and say, hey, Chris, I can beat you at your best. <laughs> so, if I would say that, I'll be stupid as stupid as hell. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm no, I, can, I have no problem, you know, uh, um, admitting that. But I know I can catch you off. That's what I'm saying. But with Ronnie, yeah. with Ronnie, I think he was just so dominant. Even if he was a little off, it wouldn't have been enough to beat him. But you know, I would, but I, but definitely had some, you know, some people around me that was they might have been good for me, but I had a lot of people around me that wasn't good, mm -hmm. and I let. People around me that wasn't. You, you think know, you think training with Flex in the beginning kind of kept you in the background too much? No, Flex tried to keep me in the background. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is because you're training with Flex like, and you're knowing how Flex is going, did you always? Yeah, I was. Did you always? 
when I wasn't that trainer uh, partner at first. Uh -huh. uh, Charles like, recruited me to uh -huh. train with him. But I was training with um, Robbie Robinson a lot as a kid and moving up in, when I moved to Venice. And I was training with uh, Gary Stridham at the, uh -huh. in, the, in the early 90s. Even training for the USA, I wasn't training with them for the USA. I wasn't, I know, you know, people think that I trained with Charles that whole time, but I did not. I was, um, I was doing my own thing, but we were tight friends, but we had different training, training times. And, you know, we, we'd be at a gym at the same time, but I was training with, with those guys. And those yeah. guys did a lot for me and they helped me understand what to do, go, you know, the, the stories about Europe and, <clears throat> me wanting to go to Europe and work in Europe. All that stuff came from, you know, Gary Stratum and Robbie Robinson. Hmm. You know, so. Hey, there was, uh, you you yeah. didn't train with Flex and Rico for years, like people think. Right, right. I, mean, I did, yeah. I did, but I got recruited into that. I didn't, I didn't get a, it wasn't like, you know, that was the, that wasn't the plan. The plan was those two together. It wasn't me. Huh. So, you, I came so you didn't, in, you didn't ask for it? No, I didn't right. ask for it. Do you guys see, uh, that um, I'm just change the subject a little bit. That Andrew pulled out of the Arnold, both Arnolds. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm just Mark. I'm bringing this up because we just talked about him last week. You think that focus wasn't there? I think he wasn't. He wasn't anywhere near where he should be at this point. Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, you know, he competed way too much. He needed a rest, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes you just try and hoping that your body's gonna respond and. Uh, you know, probably he realized that this is not happening at the level that he wanted, so he can be competitive with Hardy and Samson. And I uh, think I think watching Hardy and Samson on in real life almost every day that don't help either. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but you know, I'm sure that he has all the confidence in his physique, and I know that Ron Harris and and Giles they actually saw him possibly winning last time classic. You know, they have an argument for that. So which you know, who what you you saw they saw him winning over Samson. And over, uh, I, over Andrew Giles had Andrew winning on Friday night, but after on Saturday he changed his mind to Samson. I think I had Samson winning the whole time. Yeah, Remember, Jose, yeah. Jose and Chris Acida were like, "You're an idiot," because like because like they they thought Andrew, <laughs> they thought Andrew was like, you're an idiot. You know, they thought Samson was not even close to Andrew, and I was like, I don't know, but guys. Did, I think Samson's got. But did Samson get harder the next the second day? If I remember. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but uh, and, it was, uh, and I take responsibility for. Yeah, that. more clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, just uh, just just, 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 a little, just a little bit. No, but I I think that makes the that makes it a, a lot more interesting for some of the other guys, you know, with yes. Andrew being out, and uh, I just saw this picture. I never really I didn't follow him until uh, yes. You see that picture that he posted? Yeah, yeah. He's, sta he's, sta like, he's standing there he, relaxed. Who does he remind he, you of? He, Look, he, looking at that picture, who does he remind you of? Just that relaxed pose. With Milos. That. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> I wish. No, with the huge flaring quads. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but with the who? fucking leg. I was more impressed with this midsection. I know, this little tiny ass waist. I'm more impressed with that part because you could do so much with it with what you got that. But who does that is Wolf. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm talking about this front. Yeah, Dennis have that crazy sweep. I'm talking well, about this front. I'm just yeah. talking about the front relax pose when he stands yeah. there. He had that small waist, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh I mean I'm sure. I'm I, I I'm impressed. I gotta say, I didn't think he was gonna he was looking that good. And I didn't I forgot that he was classic. He switched from classic to he open. Used to be classic, yeah. You remember he missed the weight by like uh, eight kilos or something? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if you, no, if you miss the tailgate, hey, if, the you, tailgate happened. <laughs> if you miss a weight by eight kilos, that means you didn't even try. <laughs> yeah. How, is he tall? Yeah. Milos, is he tall? It, it's about 5'11". Uh, okay, so that's, that's considered tall in bodybuilding. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I mean, uh, listen, just for you to put in perspective, He's a businessman. He has a restaurant, a medical clinic. You know, I don't even know how many like businesses. <laughs> and uh, he's been busy with this as well and preparing, right? And uh, he just has to be talked a lot. And uh, he he is now even more motivated 
as you said, uh, having another space, Andrew Jack is not going to be there, so he can see himself maybe squeaking into the top three. Mm -hmm. He believes he can do it. Uh, in most of the poses, he he finds himself super competitive. You know, okay. he knows he's going to lose. Like, How, how's his back? Yeah, yeah I was, back I was just back about to, I was just yeah. about to ask the same. That's still his weakness. I mean, you know, for sure. But, uh, uh, you know, there, there are seven other poses. I mean, six other poses. He's actually very good in a, a rear lot spread, and which doesn't make sense. And, Chris, I want to ask you, uh, when somebody can spread the lats, you know, east coast, west coast, I mean, really, like, you know, jumbo jet, but uh, in a, a rear relaxed pose, they, they don't come out. What do you do? I say, like, man, you know, the same way you pull them out, right? You know, just, just put your arms down. But he never did. But you can, once you spread your lats, you can actually flare the muscles towards the crowd more so than than having it, you know, just out to the side. Like you got to do something else. You still got to contract, lift that chest up. Oh, you can you, get Chris? The Chris, body. can you show us that without the shirt so I can see what you're talking about? <laughs> we go. <laughs> I, I no, just, no, I think this is very important. It's, for out, man. it's very important for people to see to see what Chris is explaining because this makes a lot of sense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious, bro. I, you, know, you, know, you, you don't have to take off your t-shirt. I'm just saying this. So so instead of what? <laughs> Wait, Chris, I'm no, I'm no, now I'm fucking serious one time and you think this is a joke. Because <laughs> you spark it. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. No, but the buddy makes sense. It makes sense. You know, because, I, I this, because Chris, this, Chris was Chris was always upright. He didn't really try to do uh, this. He was always, you know. And whenever, I, whenever you're facing the crowd, or you know, you know, whatever you whatever you want showing to the crowd, I always flared that towards the crowd, never mm. back away. Not even no pose, never this shit. The side chest is always straight here and there. Never anything going back and away from the crowd. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do remember when you were telling Max Charles when, uh, when uh, you were posing with him yeah. in, a, in a room, you know, for back, you like, you know, stick those back muscles into the judges, like push yeah, right, all right. the back muscles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Towards the, the judges, which was very interesting. Look, uh, but you know that guy. But I was gonna say, uh, with with horse um, hmm? working on that thickness, that's the that's the last part that a true bodybuilder has a good frame that can have a small waist, have the have the quads. Do we have? have the, but he don't have the thickness. You just got to uh, you got to work what you're gonna do to build that thickness. And do it's not. Do we have anybody in the open with with his with his structure? Um, I mean, I I honestly feel if if Samson had that waistline, he would be killing everybody right now. Uh, like that that tight of waistline. Listen, here is he another probably, example. He'd be everybody in the world with that body. Uh, what I was talking about, you either had the limbs or torso. I mean, horse has a crazy arms, crazy legs. I mean, world class off the charts, right? And he still needs to fill up chest and back. You know, it, it, it happens quite often. Yeah, he said, so, but is it is it just the quads? How is his hamstrings? Good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, You'll be impressed. Cause Cause I, two bigger sweeps. I love it. Yeah, because I started following him, and I'm start. I'm trying to see some pictures. You know, from now, because he only posted this picture relaxed from the front. Mm -hmm. I try to see some some other pictures because if you look like yeah. that, you coming into the honor yeah. looking like that, you want to post some more pictures. Just yeah, hamster calves are great, off the chart. Uh, yeah, he has that uh, hanging like flex wheeler head. Like you see, so I still think that we can improve on uh, separation. You know, this vertical lines. You know, the semi membranosis tendinosis biceps femoris, which I could do this all the time. I know exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. I can't really explain them. You know, sometimes they stick the leg way too much uh, far back, and then you can't contract. Like if you're doing a standing leg curls right your your knee is all the way close and then you just you can fire the hamstring mm. when you stick your yeah i don't know why people do this they stick the leg all the way back like how are you going to contract the hamstring they worry know? about they worry about flexing the glutes more than the hamstrings yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you know that's, that's, a major, that's a major 
major goal in that pose is. I'll tell you this, Chris, you, know, you can maybe explain. And if Nico can find, I did the front relax, I could hang in with the with the Chris, then you go side relax and I could hang in. And then we turn to the back and it was that lights out, Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's no comparison. But uh, so I was always going just for a width, V taper, right? Yeah. And Chris would open up and then does something with the arms back like this. Yes, yes, yes. All the detail comes, yeah. like, you know, from you know bottom to the top. I I, I said many I times, so how the fuck does he do this? Yeah. I mean, that's what Dennis yeah. was referring to. Yes, right? exactly. From the front and from the back. From mm -hmm. the back is even better. He was standing and it was just like, <laughs> right. what yeah. the fuck is he, he doing? Had a, you know, some simple move, but he would just like, yeah. fire everything up. I couldn't do it. Of course, when you don't have it, you can't do it. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think this guy um, uh, can 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 move into the top in, in some of the top spots. Ron, what do you think? You follow this? You follow this guy? Yeah, Marcelo. He's he's got amazing potential. What was his pro debut? Italy, Milos? In Romania. Romania. Yeah, I'm very very impressed because I I didn't like him as a classic guy. I thought he was too big for classic. I was hoping he would move to open, and once I saw him, I was I get. And like Neil said, the arms and legs are what stood out immediately to me. Some of the best, that's one of the best lower bodies in the sport right now, this guy has. Mm. Arms are arms are phenomenal in that structure. The clavicles are out to here, tiny little waist. He just, I just, I was like, oh my God. Another guy, he's another one that so many guys I've seen over the years, if they just had the back to match everything else, uh. if the back impressed me as much as all those other body parts and, and uh, everything flowed perfectly, harmoniously, this guy could be. I hate predictions, but top five Olympia, he's got that potential. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's that's serious. No, he's gonna uh, he's gonna have to prove and, himself and, at the Arnold. Andrew not competing uh, opens the door for many. We talk about Rafael Brandao is phenomenal, and he trains with Horse MD, right? So they're friends. So it's uh, you know how Brazilians are so passionate; they're going to go against each other. Both believe they can beat each other, which is great. Uh, James Hollingstead, you know, uh, I forgot to put the uh, update yesterday. I was too busy. He said me uh, he's getting in crazy condition. Yeah, yeah uh, but he, he's always got the condition. James. Yeah. But, but, Close to the contest, I mean, he kind of missed his peak a few times, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, what we're working on it is just, he, he's a thick, dense, you know, all this. He needs to open up and show the width. You know, so when you have a habit of, okay, I'm doing this and shoulders in, you have to put them out. Like, lats here, you have to put them out, right? So anything that creates the width, mm -hmm. you know, say, you're not going to gain much uh points in this way but if you just open up now you have thickness and you have a width and you have a waist is disappearing like non-existent and wow. he didn't really pay attention to the abs as much before and I, i'm on him constantly you should see his abs right now look at his side triceps you know super flat stomach deep abs you know so this is his ticket uh legs he knows more how to show this uh, separation now before you know when you just push the knees out, but you don't tilt your hips, so you don't get that uh, from a hip flexor. Was was he not even training his abs? Because that's what I thought. Uh, you know, he for sure is training now. Yeah, no, and I'm talking back about is, before. Before. Yeah, I want you to see also, Chris, his back double biceps. I think he has a crazy detail and everything. Uh, I think that you're gonna say that he needs to open up more for that one. But uh, you know, yeah, you yeah. You have an eye for that, and especially for back poses. I'll actually send you uh, to, to. Okay, here. I'll take a look. Yes. So anyway, uh, but uh, Ron, because you've been you've been around, <laughs> and uh, you you you're very analytical. So, just your favorite physique going to the Arnold Classic. Ooh. Your favorite physique out of everybody that is that is going. Ah. Uh. I would go with Samson, even though I want more condition. I still want more condition out of that man. But uh, just the, the structure, the the round shapes, the mass, it, it just, I know we've had this argument before, and Giles 
<laughs> I would love to see this guy just dry and sh shredded, dry, grainy looking, and everything would be just that much more impressive. It's it's a beautiful physique. It's to me, he's still missing that 5.4% condition more that I want to see out of him. Mm -hmm. But that's my favorite physique out of all the physiques going in. Is that yeah. it, it, what, what do you prefer, Samson or Andrew, physique wise? Samson. Hmm. Yeah. Why? I, I respond. Andrew's got a more angular. It's, it's everything's not as round as it is on Samson. There's more like right angles to things, if that makes any sense. Yeah. It's not as bubbly. Uh, he's got some crazy poses. I'm, I yeah. am a fan of speak. I just I like Samson. The fact that everything is has that real round, bubbly shape yeah. to it with the little tiny yeah. joints. Full, much fuller. Andrew Andrew looks to me. He looks p polished. If that's the right word. Yeah. Looks yeah. what? Polished. polished. Yeah. Andrew looks probably yeah. yeah it's, it's probably because when you see him standing from the front with the deep but it's maps. been a process it's been a process how he is now yeah because you you know over the years when you first saw Samson you know improving it's been a quite of a process and it's been a it's been a it's been working well for him yeah. I mean yeah I mean obviously <laughs> it's, it's right I'm saying it's, it's like it's, I mean just what you what you would want to see out of a bodybuilder right I mean, he's, he's doing he's doing everything right, you yeah. know. If he continues if he continues to get better, we'll, we'll soon see exactly what we want to see. I guess. You know, you're building your weaknesses. Maybe maybe we see it for the in, at the Arnold. If we see it at the Arnold, and that's that's all he's gonna need to. Yeah. After that, it's gonna be just a little bit more improvement from there. Whatever mm. that is, you know, we don't know what that is yet, but <clears throat> he seems to be working very diligently on improving those. Areas that he need improved. So, so the things that we were, we were talking about, seeing yourself winning, right? Samson see himself clearly being able to win. Of course, know, I mean, come on, Milos. He's but, but yeah, I I just talk about it. I didn't see it. You ask Chris if he saw yeah. after placing yeah. third at the Olympics. But if you would if you would have won the it. Arnold one year and you would come back the next year, you could see yourself winning this again. Yeah, but winning the Olympia, you know, Samson is very confident. He's not arrogant by no means. He's uh -huh. just very confident, right? He, he knows the, the tools that he's bringing, and he needs to polish. I mean, uh, I appreciate that you guys always speak your mind. I tell him the same thing, you know, the conditioning. You conditioned a show is over before it starts. You know, the, 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 the same level of similar level of conditioning, right? So... I can talk hashtag bodybuilding all day long, right? They're going to say, oh, there is one thing that they can still beat him on. And then, oh, that's why you lost. Uh, you know, I, I just don't see, you know, uh, Derek and and, uh, and uh, Hardy beating Samson in the, in the same level of conditioning, just looking at the bodies, looking at the body parts, looking at each mandatory quarter turns, you know, is way, way too overpowering, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why is it that some guys are are looked at as arrogant for saying they can win the Mr. Olympia when others aren't? Because if you're competing in the Mr. Olympia and you have you have that belief that there is no way I can win this show, how can you possibly do everything 100 percent with your with your training, your prep and all that? I, I it, it bothers me that some people get down on some guys who say I'm going to be Mr. Olympia someday. I, I, you don't have that belief. Yeah, but I think it I think it depends on who it is. You know, I mean, and how they say it. Yeah, you know, sometimes you got to be realistic. You got to be real. You got to be realistic. You know how many emails I get a day, and people said, "Yeah, man, I, I want you to coach me, man. I know I can be Mister Olympia." And then I will look at the pictures, and I'm like, "What the fuck is you thinking?" You know, it's just you know, just because you think you can do it, that doesn't mean that this is possible. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's been there's been hundreds of thousands of people before you look ten times better than you, and they thought the same. You know, so it depends on who it is who says it and how. You know, like when you see when you hear Nick Walker saying that he's going to win the Olympiad, and it, it, it makes sense that he says it. He believes you know? it. Yes, that, yes. That he takes, you can see it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, there but, are people who get mad at him for saying that. Like, how dare you think you can be Mr. Olympia? Well, you're always going to have people saying that. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, it's true. Even you know, listen, Phil, Phil Heath won the Olympia seven times. How many times he heard shit, negative shit after he won the Olympia? Yeah. When people, they, they try to find something. It's like Milos just said with, with Samson. They're going to always try to find something to knock him off. Yeah. Derek just won the Olympia and, and people knocking on him. 
You know, it's going to be the same. It doesn't matter. There's no such thing as a perfect And build visit. you up and then tear you down. There's, yeah, there's, exactly. First, they want you to win, and after you win, they're going to, they're going to shit on you. <laughs> That's exactly how it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, for every champion. I, I, I think the only one, and this is only as far as I can go back, the only Haney. one was Haney, where you never heard anybody saying that he, should, that, that, that he doesn't deserve it. There was a question on the uh, uh, 1990 drug test. Oh, yeah, yeah, but okay. Well, 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 yeah. well uh, but other than that, every win. But even then, even then, when you look at the videos, you know, yeah, he was down. He said, oh, I, I still think that he was dominant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but let's talk about that. 92, okay, and from month, uh, Dorian. Uh, could it be complained that he won some of the shows that he didn't deserve? What, what do you mean? Could it be? It was. There was a lot of controversy yeah. going on, and a lot of people said, "Oh." Then yeah. Ronnie after him. Yeah. There was, you know, some. Then Jay after him. Yeah. There was some. Yeah. You know, uh, this, it's and, and it's going to keep going. It doesn't matter who wins, because there's. No, I don't think we have a, a dominant physique. Well, Samson could be the one. Yeah. That could be so dominant, if it. Again, if he brings the condition that like a Hardy, yeah, Hardy brings, it would be. I think it's so much closer these days than it was when we had like one front runner, one front runner. Yeah. Oh, he's got to show yeah. up and look in a certain way, and then it's over. Yeah, yeah. Over after the pose, after the posing uh, rounds. Yeah, uh, Chris and Dennis, uh, 2002, we went to, uh, after the Olympia, we went to Amsterdam, right? Mm -hmm. And Ronnie was there, and then you guys went to the GNC show. I wasn't, I was staying in Europe. Uh, I've seen pictures this morning. Somebody put it like Gunter, the only guy that beat uh, uh, Ronnie, Ronnie at his time. And then if he deserved it, you know, so I wasn't there, you know, and you guys were on the stage, so it's not, not the same. But uh, again, the question is, did he have enough to beat Ronnie that day? Well, Ronnie was off. He wasn't his all-time best, but Ronnie did a lot of shows, you know, did the European tour. We came from from Amsterdam, as you said over to New Orleans for that show. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just depends on what you, I mean, if I'm judging, I got different takes on what, what I would do. I mean, I, I was like, I never really liked if you didn't pay attention to the waistline, you know, uh, at that time, Gunther was super sharp. He just went in front of Joe Weider. We were over in Amsterdam, and Joe Weider's calling, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, shit. Um, who was with us over there um, in, uh, in Amsterdam? Dexter? No, the, the, he was the head of the, the IVB at the time. Wayne? Oh, he, Wayne, Wayne. He called Wayne, and he said, Wayne, man, you know, he said, Gunther's here at my house right now. He is shredded to the bone. I want him in that first that first call out. And once I heard that shit, I was like, God damn. <laughs> we ain't even at the show yet. And we, you know what I'm saying? That's, I mean, but did he deserve to be there? He was very tight. Yes. But I, who knew that when we we're, we're traveling and we, 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 we coming from Europe back to America and he's just resting at home and, and sharpening up. Yeah. But pictures, pictures on Instagram today, uh, right before the show I was watching. I didn't see it, but... Yeah, Ronnie didn't look... He didn't look off. No, he, Ronnie was off. Ronnie was off for Ronnie, but he, he, he went... We, we traveled for three weeks. Yeah, yeah. but... Uh, and came and then came back to the U.S. and had to wait another week to go do this show. And, and he, was, he wasn't the Ronnie, but I think he was still good enough to win. But I, you know, but this was... That sparked up a lot... For the Olympia the following year, you know. Kevin so, went Kevin went crazy. He jumped on the stage and yeah. hugging Gunther like that was his nephew. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like Kevin, he was just so Kevin. happy just because he like, be, like if you could be Ronnie, I could be Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that pissed was, Ronnie off. That yeah. pissed Ronnie off so much. He, I think he came in his all time best at that at that next Olympia though. Yeah. Mm. He was like, I'm, I'm 300 pounds too. <laughs> yeah. What you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, training, the training video that he did for that show was called The Cost of Redemption. 
because he was so pissed off. Oh, that was that was the one for for the two thousand three Olympia. Yeah, it was a, live it. That the one where he kept saying, "If these people want to go to war, I'll take them to war." Yeah, is that his big quote about that? <laughs> for the two thousand three Olympia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool though because actually when I when I was uh, training for the ninety nine Olympia. As you said that, you know, when you felt like what you were going to do and you did what you felt you were going to do, I felt that I was going to be in the top three. And I said that in the Battle of Olympia video. And I said, I've been six, you know, three times. And I was like, that's, I feel like that's enough for being top six. It's time for me to move up. And I had to go in front of Kevin and Nasser and Sean, which I've, I've never beat Sean at the time, but that's the, that's the time I was like, I just feel like I had enough and I had to, this is like shit or get off the pot. Like you're going to make it been in the top echelon of it, or you're going to continue to stay where you're at. And that's where I felt like I was going to be. And that's what happened, man. That first call out felt like it was like, holy shit. Just in the top and just having three in the call out and not yeah. having that. Yeah. Cross. That's that I, I'm, Ooh, I'm saying, cause yeah. that's why, that's why when you just said first call out for the listeners, they probably don't know. They don't remember that. Yeah. Back then, the call out was three athletes, not six or seven. Uh, man, yeah, because right now, was, right now, you yeah. can be in the first call out and still be seventh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Because I, I, I saw was man, it, that's, wasn't that's it last year? Was it last year where the first call out was like seven? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was so many, seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. like don't damn. you don't you think it makes it even harder to to judge? When you get when all seven guys standing oh, yeah. next to each other, and then all the way across the state. Trips. Remember oh, that time when when Ronnie first went down. Ronnie, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, um, uh, Rami first went to fourth or fifth, and he was just on the outside looking in. And I was like, "Shit, like what is going on?" <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, he was champion the year before that, so I was like, "Wait a minute, this time making." I, I I just think that when you have less people, you you, you have a better comparison. You know, because because you obviously you obviously right here so much. Yeah, you obviously yeah. put the ones that you I think are the front runners in the center. So, you know, so you focus on the center. You don't you can't judge three guys next to them the same You're way. Gonna miss, you gonna I mean, really- I mean, something. I mean, I get. I, I think so, but I'm not a judge, so I mean, I, that that would be something for, for Steve or Tyler or one of the other judges to to explain because, I I would focus too much on the center, and it would give me time to 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 really compare because at the end of the day, it was three, then four or five, and then you mix them up and you put them next to each other so you get a better comparison, you know. I mean, they still do it today. They still mix it up a little bit. You know? Yeah, I mean, they, they do the wide selection and yeah. then, then uh, narrow it down to the top three. But I agree with you. Uh, on Primetime Muscle, you guys uh, just talked about this. Tarek said that you have a six, seven seconds to compare the guys. So you have to make that decision you know, quite quickly. So if you have a six, seven seconds or 10 seconds for uh, three guys, yeah, you can scan it. But six, it's kind of hard. But those but guys... Don't you, feel like, don't you feel like people getting missed? Like they... Like they People you get, could be missed. I think it's easy. I think it's easier that way to 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 overlook someone. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It's easier. I, it's I easier. It. But you're talking about like, 2022. There were 32 guys in the show. I I feel like they were putting more people to comparisons because they're like, it's already like midnight. Like, ah, oh, shit. We gotta get these. We gotta get everyone out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't think that's how they felt. I don't think they had mm-hmm. to rush it because it was late. I don't think the time had something yeah. to do with it. I mean, see, I mean, that's, day, I mean, we got some, we got some, some top-notch judges in that lineup. Oh, unbelievable! Uh, I have a great confidence. That's why I told you. Okay, for example, uh, Ron, you can very confidently call your top five after you see how Steve positioned right away, and then you pay more attention to oh, why did uh, you know Steve put this guy in the middle? You know, okay, I'm, now I mean, here. I mean, listen, we we already. They already see those guys come do the individual mandatories, so they already know who is where. Yeah. You know, not yet, not first, second, and third, but they already know the top call out. So uh, I know. think the way it went, just as I said to you, IBB uh, as you competed also was three at the time. 
But at NPC shows, you know, USA and nationals, they would bring six, seven. So they realized, okay, we can do it here. We can replicate this at the, at the pro level. There's no difference, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think they're doing a phenomenal job. A couple of years ago, we were kind of complaining, I was, that there's not enough comparisons. I really think that uh, more comparisons, more fight, you know, it's like extra round in uh, UFC and boxing or extra, you know, give them a little bit more chance. Because sometimes these things happen. They fade, they change, and now, oh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, somebody's winning. So do you like do you like for someone to change and fade and then uh, they're well, winning at the beginning of the, of the round, by the end of the round, they were losing? Yeah, well, but listen, if this happens, then what? You know, because uh, this is another thing to put uh, in perspective. Let's say uh, you have those crazy legs, but uh, first time we did comparison, you, you flex them properly and everything from the front looks perfect. But second comparison, third comparison, you completely, you know, didn't flex them. You lose half of the body, and which, which happens to me when I was trying to judge. I said, well, now the guy that won the first round would not win now because look at it, there was not a single separation on, on the legs. In a front three legs, front double biceps, front to last spread. I mean, you know, it's you lose the pose. Not because the guy has a better body, but you didn't show what you're supposed to. And, you know, I'm sure that judges, okay, they have somebody and then they maybe change. And now this and that. Steve was going with the, um, uh, Samson and um, Nathan Diasha at the, that first Arnold Classic, like, I don't know how many, four or five times until somebody falls off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And let that's, the, hey, that's called let them battle it out. Yeah. Uh, if if it's if it's absolutely. this close, if it's this close, where it literally, mm -hmm. for, even in a judge's eyes, could go either way, let mm -hmm. him, let him battle it out. Yeah, they, they said like uh, for Samson when they were doing this top three, and in the, the last uh, uh, third call, he starts sweating too much, and oh, that cost him. I said, okay, so if you sweat, <laughs> no, but but but, but let's see, and a lot of people actually put this as a oh, that's the reason. I say, if you sweat, you should be penalized? What the hell? I mean, Ronnie yeah, Coleman water. was sweating. You know, it's, it's going out of the style of 98 uh, Olympia prejudging. But more he sweat, better he looked. By the end of the prejudging, he smoked everybody, you know? So is this considered, oh, penalty? Oh, you're sweating? Oh, you're leaking? Listen, if, if you're leaking, yes. I mean, uh, this is why I tell you guys, immediately look and just spread it out. Make sure. Some people don't, and it's distracting. Yeah, and it looks, uh, it looks stupid, uh, yeah. Yeah. You but have these shows that are so it? close. If it's that close, I've been to shows. You guys have all seen shows. You've probably been in shows where the top two, it's a tie. It really is a tie. You can't say this guy is better than that guy. They might have slightly different physiques, but each one is worthy of the win. You can't have a tie in bodybuilding. What do you do? So yeah. one of the ways, like Steve does it all the time, is I'll just have him pose. I'll do the. I'll have him run through like four rounds of the mandatories and see who falls down first, mm -hmm. who who starts fading and, and not not really flexing anymore. But I mean, falls down as far as loses composure. Yeah, I mean it's tough. Not it's, down. It's, no, not actually falling. He would never. He, he keeps everybody alive and safe. <laughs> what do you? It's it's tough in a sport like this. It's subject subjective. When you do sometimes have guys like Hadi and Derek at this last Olympia, I didn't know. I, I could have flipped a coin until the very end. I said, I don't know. I don't know who deserves to win. Really? To me, they're both Mr. Olympia, but you can't have two Mr. Olympians. <laughs> Milo said Samson. Yeah. If you don't, if you can't, yeah, if you can't, like if, you can't if you can't decide between Derek and, and Hadi, you give it to Samson. Okay. There, you yeah, there you go. So, so, the clear, so but, but Ron, quick question. Now, there's no more press pass at the shows, so are uh, you going to miss that? What? what? No more press pass for what? For you. Oh, well, that's not true. I could apply for one on my own. Oh, really? I, my own. I mean, I have a YouTube channel, Ron Harris. I've oh, been so, there for 18 years. Oh, they, oh right. will, they will give you a press pass for a YouTube channel? No, no, I haven't tried, but I mean, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope I, I hope I didn't start nothing. I've been in the press, the media area with uh, and like Arnold, for example, and there's like kids next to me who are like writing for the local high school or something. No, no offense. And, you know, people from like the local Columbus dispatch or whatever. 
So I don't think it's impossible to get press passes, but yeah, well, maybe yeah. Well, maybe we shouldn't make this public here because uh, now everybody's with the YouTube channel is going to ask for a press pass. Well, they do. I mean, it's legitimate. It's, it's not like the old days. I mean, have who, to edit this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're gonna leave it in. We're gonna leave it in. You're a legitimate media outlet, yeah. which a YouTube channel that you know somebody like uh, a Nick Strength and Power. Have, have you have you requested Buddy Arnold already? Uh, I mean, I have no plans to go right now. Oh, so you're not going? No. Oh, because now it's, 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 it's bring me. Got you. They're not. They're not going either. Muscle so, Tech's not going. Really? Okay. Well, I mean, uh, I'm going to be bald anyway. I'm getting a new hair in Turkey at the end of the month, so what? I don't know. If, I don't know if I want to be seen in public for a oh, little while. Man. Why? Why? Because they have to shave your head. Yeah, they got to shave your head, and you've seen it looks like little beads. It looks nasty when they put oh, it. Hey, Chris okay. Bumstead didn't give hey, a shit. Ian, Ian Vallier didn't give a shit. Why would you? Yeah. Oh, no, I would, I would go if I had to. It's not like I'm going to say, no, I can't go work the Arnold. No, no, but I'm not like. Everybody, like hey, you came with a huge fucking no busted, busted head to the Arnold. You didn't care. Well, from the front, they still have, have, a, blood. <laughs> have a big batch of blood. Put on a hat like, 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 like Chris did. I yeah. got a do rag with the, one of those uh, Lehaney right. '90s do rag on your head. All right, before we finish, guys, I got to get you guys' uh, prediction for this week. What is it? Six or seven weeks? Jeez. I know. Milos, I Milo, six. Milos, Milos, Milos. I was going to say six, but now I'm not sure. <laughs> Milos yeah. should know. Yeah, I should. Yeah, exactly. All right, but, um, we're going to we're going to go with this week's prediction. We're going to start with Chris. And this is just because I, I knew you were going to say, how did I know that? Because like, cause cause gonna be... your name is first. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I move it around every week. Every, every week. All so, right. We're going to go with Chris first. Do you still going to go with Hardy. I'm still going to go with Samson. I'm going to go with... Uh... Oh, before you go any further, hold on. Hold your thought. Any update on Rubio? Because it's a little bit too quiet for me to be honest. I know, I know, I know. It's, he, a, it's a little bit a too quiet. Is there could could this possibly little. be another one that's going to pull out? I can't say pull out, okay. but I still talk. I'm still leaving uh, matches with the uh, lawyer. I had supposed to talk to him at some point today. I can give you a better answer next. Next week. week. Okay, cool. All right, go ahead. Third place. Uh, so I'm going to go with third place. I'm going to go with Rubio. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Horace. I'm going to go with Rub uh, Rodip. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Rafael? Yeah, Rafael. That's it. Brando. <clears throat> All right. Milos. Oh, you got me. Hold before. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get the first two. <laughs> Let me get the... Yeah, you already know that my three guys are in top five. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where. I'm not. I'm waiting for you now. <laughs> Look at me, I'm Austin. not pre-writing anything because if I'm off, then I, I, next time I'll, you know, accuse you of changing your your, your prediction. Yeah, yeah. So okay. you still got Hardy in second. Yes, I, I mean, of course. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm just it, uh... just making no, it. Look, I love Hardy, I respect Hardy, and yeah, he can win every show that he ever enters, but then he can be, uh, from the bodybuilding aspect, he can be beaten in, in areas that the Samson can't beat him. Uh, if you remember, Hardy was at the press conference saying that size does not matter, fibrotic tissue condition matters. So he he's aiming for that. This this is how he beat Samson, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I have to put this... Ever since Arnold, you know, mentioned something to the judges that Arnold Classic, he likes to have those shapely physique like Cedric McMillan. And, you know, they, they, I think there is a little bit more emphasis on aesthetics in Arnold Classic, you know, than other why, shows. Why would that be? Because hey, Arnold, why, Arnold, why, why, why would that be? Because Arnold's show, but this is the same judges at the, it, at the Olympia. It's the same, you know, that, that's a question you can ask Steve. And listen, and even if so, yeah, put the emphasis I, on the stage. Yeah, I I, you know, I I doubt I doubt that Arnold has any influence on who's winning or who's placing where. No, he doesn't have a. That but does, he it can, doesn't work like that. He can appreciate and speak loudly, and he can be heard, and uh, you know how that works. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, like Cedric McMillan was 
and, and Samson is closer to Cedric, you know, when you think about it, okay. right? But in any way, Third place. Uh, no, Nick Walker, you know, was looking crazy <clears throat> in the classic, right? But was not considered. Nick was shocked that he was not considered. Uh, Giles and Ron, he's this and Chris Acido, they saw um, Andrew Jack winning, but it was not even a question. There was uh, straight across the board, uh, right in the middle, throughout the pre judging and the finals, Samson won. So that's why I do believe that Samson is the front runner. Okay, third, third okay. place. Uh, just to, to give credit to Hardy, I do think that he's coming improved, I do think that he's listening to old. Chris said to say, and you had to say that his back needs to be back, you know, conditioned like he was in Vancouver in 2019 Olympia. There was a different level of conditioning, you know. So if Hadi condition is known as spectacular condition, it has to be front to back and to the side. Okay, so he needs to bring that. You notice that he's bigger and thicker and back is improved. So if he brings that, then what? It's going to be that much harder to beat. I mean, listen, he beat Samson every time so far, mm -hmm. right? So in Las Vegas uh, odds, he would be ahead of Samson, of course. I just do believe that, uh, you know, Samson and I uh, have something to to prove that, you know, he realized that with each show, Romania and Prague, he improved in conditioning and he liked that look better, okay? So you know, we have to step it up for the, the Arnold. Gotcha. Third place, third place. Finally, okay, finally. It, it's definitely between uh, uh, my two guys and Rafael. I really think that this is top five. Before I was considering maybe John De La Rosa can uh, jump in. But, uh, you know, when I look at it, I think he's going to be still too small. Beautiful, beautiful body and all that stuff. It, it's not super wide and it's not big enough. I've seen some pictures and I think it's going to be. Can we get I the third place now? Damn. Hey, let, let me elaborate. You take fucking 10 yeah. minutes for one spot. Third place uh, <laughs> is going to be, uh, uh, I still have a horse over James, but uh, you can James change, you can right change it. You can change it next week, Milos. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I know. Matter. I know. Uh, as it stands right now, if I'm a judge, because uh, uh, I look for the aesthetics. No, it's here. I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting. Wise, conditioning wise, uh, James is ahead. And his dance and food, food and everything, right? It's not wide enough. And you've seen a horse in a, in front of your legs. You know, it looks like so impressive. So horse third, James fourth, and Rafael fifth. Horse, James, and Rafael. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ron Harris. We only need three, right? Five. five. Oh, five. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go first place, Howdy Chupan. Congratulations, Chopin, Chopin. Second, what? Second yeah, place. Yeah. Listen, listen, I'm serious. Think uh, the uh, Honey Rambo confirmed to me it's not Chupan, it's Chopin. Oh, Chopin. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were arguing with me. I think it would be great if you call him his name, you know? Chopin. 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 Hari Chopin. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go Samson second. Third place, James Hollingshead. Fourth place, Marcelo D'Angelos. Uh, hmm, this place. Let's give it Rafael. Rafael Brundel. Okay. I, I'm assuming. I'm assuming Rubiel is not doing it. If if he's still having issues at this point, he might, of course. If he's doing it. If he's doing it, hmm, I still don't have him ahead of ahead of these other guys. No, no. I think he needs time. He's not. He's not there yet. He'll be he'll be really really good. He's just he's not there yet, as far as I'm concerned. He needs a little more polish. So yeah, that's my top five. Dennis, um, I'm going with Hadi, Samson, Raphael, Horse, and Rubio. Do you think Samson and Horse can be the, the next Flex Wheeler and Chris Cormier out of Venice training uh, together? Oh, yeah. I mean, it could be a knockoff. <laughs> a knockoff. <laughs> yeah. 
What about uh, you? Can never be, you can never you guys, beat the original, so you can only be a, a knockoff. <laughs> but I like the fact that they train together because I think that's great for both of them. I think that's great. I, I, I really believe. So I really believe, and I think that in in their minds, they just train it together and they give them everything to beat each other. Because mm -hmm. you know you want bragging rights. You know you want to go back to oh, Brazil. Exactly. If 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 Horace beats Rafael, you know Horace got bragging rights. You know. Yeah, you did not want to lose. To, you did not want to lose that fight because yeah. half the gym probably with one of them, half the gym probably with the other one. Yeah, because I wanted. To, I I would like to see what you looked like when you walked back into goals after the Iron Man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cast up. Yeah. Bust up. Be the be the first one there for the workout. Be be I early. See you. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> Oh man! I remember Flex. I remember Flex. I remember Flex told me in the week between the Ironman and the Arnold, he did three hours of cardio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cooler every day, huh? Every day, every three day. Three hours in those two weeks, or three hours every day? It's one week. It was one week. It was okay. One week from the Ironman okay. to the Arnold. Three, Arnold. three every day. Oof. I yeah. still think I should. And have zero carbs. Him. Zero carbs. He didn't That's almost it. almost didn't eat. You know. He got he got he got sharper. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, Danny, do you, you believe that zero carb story? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, after he after he lost to Chris, I, I kind of believe. But he, I tell you one thing, change. He didn't bring nobody with him. He usually bring the whole family to the Arnold Classic every year. Uh, he did it. Not that show. He went there by himself. Oh really? Mm, I didn't think he thought he was gonna win. And then, you know, a lot of little weird shit happened after that show. I thought was a little, a little strange, but. That's for another for another topic. For another, for another episode. All right, another guys. Episode. I appreciate you. Ron, thank you so much for making the time, man. And Thanks, uh, Ron. of course, Milos, Chris. Thank you guys. And all right. uh, we will we'll, we'll see you all next week. I enjoyed this one today, guys. And, thank you. Yeah. And Ron, if we don't see you at the Arnold, where will what, what show are you gonna be next? We'll definitely be at New York Pro. New York. I, like I said, I'm on I got my YouTube channel Ron Harris going again, so Urge everyone to check that out and bring yeah. back some of the old content that we had from the other channel. Oh, okay. And, uh, so, yeah, so, I'm not, so I'm you not leaving the industry. So you still anytime you, anytime you have something, send me. I'm gonna repost uh, as a story. Yeah, Milos reposts everything. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm, a fan. <laughs> I'm still waiting for him to repost my shit. He never reposts <laughs> my shit. Yeah, he reposted everybody else. He reposting shit. Uh, he ignores us. Shit. Yeah, hey, I, 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 I repost at least twenty of yours, which we can prove. <laughs> and we repost a single of mine. Which we can prove. I've reposted yours. I, but listen, I tell you why. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully, okay. hopefully, oh, right here publicly, can you help me? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm usually not stupid with stuff. But I have I had an app to repost. That app is outdated. It doesn't work anymore. How the fuck do you repost? Download okay, another one or maybe update Get it. Get another one and pay the goddamn $3. Oh, that's you what know, it yeah. is? Okay, send, yeah. do me a favor. Send me a fucking text with the picture of the app so I can get that app. So I, Because I don't know how to repost. Oh, shit. Okay, I'll send you this. I know. I, so, I sound stupid as hell right now, but I don't know how to repost. Yeah. Bro, man. I, I have my kids help me with all that stuff because I don't know how to do all that Instagram. Yeah. And yeah. I don't need it too. No, Milo, send me that app. The three, I, I'm, right. I'm okay with $3. Coming up. I'm gonna uh, check every, up. every time you post something that I like, I'm going to repost it. Yeah, I said, right. and then I put down. This is for you. You got to do a copy link and then go press press the bottom. Yeah, I know yeah. what you got to do. I did it with the other one, but the app is not working. No, it's no longer uh, working. Yeah, I mean, I, I give you a heads up. I mean, tomorrow is my birthday, birthday though. Yeah, tomorrow uh, tomorrow's his birthday. We're gonna have to. Gonna, so you guys gonna have to find the good pictures and and, and yes. then send it. Oh uh, yeah. All <laughs> right. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick I, one like you do. I I'm still, gonna pick one where I look best in the fucking photo. And then I'm gonna put that with which <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find a picture from Thailand. You like to win all I'm your gonna, shots. That's I'm, going, sort of a... <laughs> I'm gonna try to find a picture from Thailand. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, guys. You guys be safe, man. Take care, y'all. All right, brother. Later.